Greetings, family, ladies and gents, boys and girls, scholars and laymen. This is your brother, Brother Ron, with a griot-ish moment today, July 19th, 2020, marks the 101st anniversary of the Washington race war. That's right, boys and girls, scholars and laymen. Have you ever heard about the Washington race war? from the red summer of 1919. This is the least known or less talked about incident that happened during the red summer of 1919. This is when white folks gone wild, Karen and Ken's gone wild, where black folks were, uh, was assaulted by this system of white inferiority throughout some of the biggest cities in America. This is post-World War I when black soldiers came home after making the world safe, quote-unquote, for democracy. But, you know, a lot of them end up getting lynched in full uniform. Still a lot of things happen. So, you know, you had incidents in Chicago. And it culminated with the Elaine Race Massacre of 1919 right across the bridge from me in Elaine, Arkansas. But I want to talk about the Washington Race War because this is interesting. Because this is actually the one where black folks, you could say, in a way, won. It was a pirate victory. Uh, it was won at a great cost, but black folks fought back. This is before Grandmaster Jay and his uh, NFAC committee, uh, NFAC coalition or whatever. You know what I'm talking about. That uh, marched on Stone Mountain, Georgia. But this, this is what I want to talk about. The reason why they don't talk about the Washington race war is because black folks, like I said, fought back and won. It all happened when this white lady uh, by the name of Elsie Stefnick, she's like the, the grandmother or the great-grandmother or the great-great-grandmother of the Karens. Now, Elsie Stefnick claimed that she was walking home from work from the engraving department or office, and she was attacked by two black men uh, allegedly, uh, some reports said she was uh, allegedly jostled, jostled or sexually assaulted or they were trying to steal her umbrella. But anyway, she claimed that she was attacked by these black men. Uh, the Washington, D.C. police allegedly arrested uh, some suspects and let them go. Uh, she claimed that this happened, but we don't really know if it actually happened. Hence, she is the grandmother of the Karens. So we don't really know. But the thing about it was her husband was an employee at the Naval Aviation Department. So he worked for the government. Some of his buddies got really mad Saturday night. Uh, these His buddies are people that were in the Army, the Navy, the Marines. So you had white men in their Navy, Marine, and Army uniform tearing up black D.C. They went to Southwest, they harassed, beat, brutalized, lynch, rape, pillage, whatever, any black person they could find. They didn't care if you was young and old, or, I mean, excuse me, young or old, uh, man, woman, or child, guilty or innocent. They were just beating up, killing black folks, maiming black folks in the streets, mobbing up and down D.C. in their military uniforms. Let me make it clear. These were enlisted white men it was going around brutalizing the black community based on an incident which may not have ever occurred. That's 101 years ago in the nation's capital. Woodrow Wilson, the president, the one who endorsed the movie The Birth of a Nation, said it was like writing history with lightning. Uh, he knew about it and stood down. He did nothing for four days as the black citizens of D.C. were terrified by their own government. Even the Washington, D.C. police did not do anything. 700 police, and they, when they did something, they got on the side of the lynch mob. See, every race incident, major race, massacre, war, disturbance in this country, at the nucleus, at the epicenter, is some form of police mis misconduct or negligence. Let me be clear. So all this law and order is BS. It's this systemic and organized law and disorder, okay? So 
You got police officers. You got white men in their Navy, Army, Marine uniform terrorizing black folks for four days. So what changed? Black folks said enough is enough. They formed their own impromptu NFAC organization. You had not only just street black folks, but boule, middle class black folks. You had black teachers, male and female, going to the pawn shops, to the stores, buying up all the guns and all the ammunition. You had the military veterans, the World War I vets. They still had some of their guns and weapons. They were sniping white folks out the top of Howard Theater. You had black folks on the top of Howard Theater. You were teachers, middle class, you know, just, you know, well to do black folks that was with the hood folks sniping these, these white folks <laughs> off the Howard Theater. I can't mean, you had black folks doing drive bys on these mobs of white people. Brother named Thomas Armstead had his girl. Jane Gore, they went out like Queen and Slim, but they took something with them, though. They were driving up and down the street, shooting white folks down who was attacking black people. They had a gang in their car. They were just going, gang, 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 gang. What, what did Joe, Joe, Joe Brown say? Bye, bang, not bling. Bye, bang, not bling. Bang, bang, bang. They, so they were going up and down the street, and they got killed. Uh, the ancestors. Thomas Armstead and Jane Gore, she was just 18, and their friends fled on foot, but, you know, the point was made. And Woodrow Wilson said, enough, enough is enough. He called in about 2,000 troops from different military bases that were near D.C. The, 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 the quest to ride, but what happened, God said it was enough. Had a heavy summer rain came in and basically ended the ride on July 24th. So it led, the race war lasted from July 19th to July 24th, 1919. Four days, the so-called incident that may never had occurred happened, I believe, on July 18th. So, that's why you don't never hear about the Washington race war, because black folks actually won. Now, the statistics said about, and also was unusual that the high mortality rates of, of white folks, you know, a lot of white folks got killed. Uh, the official statistics was 10 white people to five black folks in terms of fatal uh, fatalities. Hundreds of people were injured, the main, the wounded, whatever. But you had, uh, I think people end up dying later from their injuries that they sustained in the Washington race war of 1919. And I'm going to tell you another thing. Y'all, you know, Donald Trump talking about fake news. The Washington Post, yes. The, the Washington Post is owned by Jeff Bezos, the soon-to-be first trillionaire in American or world history. That Jeff Bezos, Amazon, that guy who owns the Washington Post, they caused that race war to happen. They printed all types of lies and gossip. Then they encouraged the white citizens of D.C. to murder black folks in cold blood. So the Washington Post should be paying reparations to black people in D.C. proper. So that's how I feel about it. You know, But they caused that ride to escalate to the wildfire that it became. So y'all should take a look. It's all online. Look at the Washington race war, Washington race riots, Red Summer. Uh, I call it the, uh, the Washington, Washington uh, race massacre. Uh, but, you know, look that up. And please make this a household thing. We got to start reclaiming our narratives. If you black out there, reclaim this narrative. The ancestors, the righteous ancestors dem demand justice. Uh, you can't tell my, I'm not my ancestors sign these hands you don't got the testicular fortitude to be our ancestors you know kyle g wilson the father of negro history week which became black history month kyle g wilson was hiding for his life during the washington race war he saw a black man get tortured mutilated and lynched by a crowd of crazy white folks he was hiding for hours Fearing for the loss of his life. Imagine if he had died back in 1919. Imagine Dr. Carter G. Wilson had died during the Washington race riots and all the good work he did. Now, he founded uh, ASALA, the um, Association of African American Life, uh, what do you call it? The, yeah, the Association for the Study of African American Life and History back in 1915. But this is four years later. And Carter G. Wilson lived till, I believe, 1950. Imagine if they would lynch him then. Strange fruit, y'all. 
So, you know, we got to get these stories. I, I thank Donald Trump for being in the office because a lot of y'all would never learn any black history if he wasn't in the office for whatever reason. A lot of y'all didn't know about no Juneteenth or no Tulsa, Oklahoma until Trump got into office. Let's be honest, y'all. So support Brother Ron. If you like the words from Brother Herd, please spread the word. You know, make this video go viral. Please support the movement, Cash App, dollar sign R2C2H2. That's Cash App, dollar sign R2C2H2. Uh, information is power. Knowledge is the currency of the universe. Know that we love you madly. In the words of that great Washingtonian, Duke Ellington, keep on producing and pushing. Oh, yes. <laughs>